In the second part of this presentation, I would like to explain the analytic hierarchy process, or in short, AHP. AHP was developed by the mathematician Thomas Sati, and the aim of this method is to support decision-making, especially group decision-making. And it also allows for the inclusion of multiple criteria in the decision-making process. So it's also called a multi-criteria decision analysis tool. HP is a structure technique for organizing and analyzing complex decisions. And it's based on insights from mathematics, but also from psychology, as it tries to reduce the cognitive load for decision makers by providing a certain structure to the decision. If you're interested in the literature that explain the basics for this method, uh, I have listed two sources here. Let's uh, continue with a short example, which is from the Sati books, a very classical example, also described on the Wikipedia site of AHP. So these slides are based on these books and on the Wikipedia article. If you would like to look into a different example, uh, I provide a YouTube link here. So the example is, you want to find the best candidate for a position and these are not my slides or these are not my examples. The three candidates are all male and white. I'm sorry for that, uh, but for the sake uh, of this explanation, we will go along with this 80, uh, yeah, 80s style uh, example, I would say. So the three candidates are Tom, Dick and Harry. They differ uh, with regards to age, experience, education and leadership qualities or charisma. So based on this uh, description that we have uh, of the candidates, we can come up with a decision hierarchy. The goal in this decision is to find the most suitable leader. And the criteria are experience, education, and charisma or leadership qualities, and age. And then we have three different alternatives who all score differently with regards to these criteria. And we are not uh, exactly interested in an absolute assessment of each candidate, but in a relative assessment of the candidate's qualities. And for this, we engage in pairwise comparisons. So we will compare the criteria with each other to find out which of the criteria are most important to us and uh, what the relative priority of these criteria are. And uh, then we will also look how candidates score against this, these criteria in comparison with their competitors. And for this, we have a scale, which is uh, normally uh, ranging from one to nine, one meaning equal importance of two candidates, nine or equal importance or equal score of two factors or two candidates. Uh, and if you have the intensity of nine, then it means that one factor, one candidate is extremely, extremely more important or extremely better than the other one. And then you can use uh, all values in between as well. And this is uh, a double-sided scale. So, um, of course, one candidate can be more uh, can be better than the other. Or one factor can be more important than the other one, but it can also be reversed. And this then is done with this scale. So if you compare two factors, uh, this K or the, the score nine over one would mean that factor one is much more important than factor two. And the scale one over nine would mean that factor two is much more important than factor one. And the same can be done for the performance of candidates regarding a certain factor or criterion. So nine over one means that candidate one is much better. One over nine means that candidate two is much better here in the center of the scale, you have one over one, which means both are performing equally. So now we can do such uh, very simple pairwise comparisons. For example, in terms of experience, we look uh, how Tom performs against Dick in this uh, comparison. And we see here the result is one to four. So that means Dick is better in this case. But Tom wins four over one to Harry. so. Uh, Tom is better than Harry in these regards. And then Dick outperforms Harry uh, quite clearly with 9 to 1. 
for the factor experience. And then we use these results of the comparisons, of the pairwise comparisons, and uh, translate them into a matrix. And what you see here is that the diagonal of this matrix uh, is filled with ones, and uh, you always have the reciprocal values. For example, Dom uh, compared to Dick is uh, 1 over 4, but when it's Dick against Dom, it's 4 over 1. So this is uh, like a, a symmetrical matrix. And then HP, the HP method calculates the relative priorities or performances uh, of all the factors or candidates. Right? So this is always based on the judgment of the decision makers and uh, we filled the matrix in the slide before. And the priorities that are being calculated are basically the matrix uh, principal right eigenvector. Okay, so by, by processing this matrix uh, mathematically, the analytic hierarchy process derives priorities for the candidates with respect to experience in this case. Okay, how this is exactly done uh, will be shown later. Uh, one note uh, shall be added here, however. So there's also a consistency index that is being calculated, or so-called inconsistency factor, which is calculated from the eigenvalue. It basically looks into the question whether the judgments that we put into the matrix before are really consistent. So that means uh, if we say, for example, Dom is better than Dick, Dick is better than Harry, then Dom also needs to be uh, better than Harry, right? If we then would say Harry is better than Dom, we would have a circle and an inconsistency. And this uh, consistency index or inconsistency factor detects such, uh, such um, inconsistencies in the judgments that we uh, enter into the matrix.